Good morning. Good morning. Happy Resurrection Sunday. Welcome to Mount Zion Baptist Church. Not only this morning are we Facebook Live, but we live in the house on today. I woke up this morning with my mind stayed on Jesus. All you need to do now is stand and give the Lord some hallelujah on this morning. Even on Facebook. I know we can't walk around, but look, Jesus rose. So at least we can rise and give him some praise on this morning. Let's praise and worship the Lord. It's been over a year since we've been together in person. I can't see your Facebook, but you can see me praise and worship the Lord on this morning. He died to save us. He died so that we can have abundant life and have it everlasting. Rise! Thank you. 
died for all of our sins. And then he got up with all power in heaven and earth in his hands. And we are here this morning on Resurrection Sunday to worship God for all the things that he has done. I'm going to read this morning uh, 1 Chronicles 16. I'm going to start at verse 8. And I'm going to read probably to verse 12 or 13. I'm reading from the King James Version. And it reads like this. Give thanks unto the Lord. Call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the people. Sing unto the Lord. Sing songs unto him. Talk ye of all his wondrous works. Glory in his holy name. Let the heart of them rejoice and seek the that seek the Lord. Seek the Lord in his strength. Seek his face continually. Remember his marvelous works that he has done, his wonders and his judgments of our mouth. We have been out of in-person worship for over a year. It is an opportunity to tell the Lord, thank you for what he has done. He has kept us all of this time. Don't act like you want to be holding back your praise right now. If you believe what I've just said about him and holding you together from last year to this year, give God some praise right now. Amen. Let us bow our heads for prayer. Gracious God, our Father in heaven, oh God, God of love and God of kindness, God of mercy, God of praise, God, you who know everything. You, creator of the heavens and the earth, the world, and everything that we know, Lord, we petition you this morning because you have been so good to us. Thank you now, Lord, for every good and perfect gift. Thank you, oh God, for our church family here at Mount Zion. Thank you for all of those that have decided to come and worship in person with us today. Thank you for all of those that decided to stay at their homes and worship on Facebook Live. Thank you, God. You're so big, oh God, that nothing is too hard for you. We thank you right now, Lord, for our church and our church family, oh God. All of our visitors, we thank you for them too, oh God, all our guests. Thank you for our pastor, our leader, oh God. We pray that you would touch him now. In the name of Jesus, oh Lord, that he can break the bread of life the way you see fit. Then, God, I ask that you touch the ears of the people that I hear that will hear the word that we will follow just like you say. Thank you now, oh God, for all that you do. I'm so excited because I know you saved me. I thank you for that. I pray, God, that you just keep us in your care like only you can do. We want to worship you today. We want to worship you in spirit and in truth. Keep us now, Lord, like only you can do. It's in Jesus' name we pray this prayer. Amen. 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 Let the church say amen. Let the church say amen again. Yeah, Reverend Bob already, already mentioned that we're going to have our offering of the Lord in person for the first time in such a long time. And here are our instructions. Down here are our tithe box. You can complete your tithe envelope if you have it. Get ready to come on down and bring it. We do want a usher at each box with a tray for those that may give in other baskets your offering. We ask oh, that you would do this, oh Lord, in this fashion. We're going to get ready to do it as the choir may sing a song right now. We want to get ready to do that. And before he do that, I'm going to just share just a small prayer for those that are going to give. Amen? Amen. God, we thank you again, oh Lord. You have blessed us, oh God, with homes and with clothes and food. You blessed us, oh Lord, with vehicles. You've blessed us, O oh Lord, in such an abundant way, O oh Lord. You've blessed us in health and strength. God, we thank you now for all of those, O oh Lord, who are here today, those that are here, O oh Lord, in the flesh, and those that are here with us, O oh Lord, on YouTube. We thank you, God, for all that you do. We pray now, Lord, that you would bless the giver in such a way that his heart would be open to do as they've done in the old in the past, even when Moses was asking them to give for the temple. And they ended up giving even more every day. Bless now, Lord, to give, O oh Lord, some 60, 100 fold, O oh Lord, that everything that they need will be met. Let their hearts be open. Your word says you love a cheerful giver, 
I pray now that you would do this. Bless this offer that they'll go forward to do what you have them to do. In the name of Jesus, we pray this prayer for his sake. Amen. Amen. As the bar sings, prepare your offerings, your tithes and your offerings.
Come on, tell the Lord, thank you in the house today. Everybody, come on, tell the Lord, thank you. He's brought you through a whole year. Hallelujah. Oh, that's an artificial type thank you. Somebody ought to be really thankful about what the Lord has done in your life over the last year. Listen, I got my 20 obituaries on my desk right now. Somebody would love to be here. If you are here in the house today, that's a reason to tell the Lord thank you. If you don't mind, come on, give the Lord some praise in here. I don't want to coerce you, but I just want to ask you, would you please just praise the Lord for being so good to you over the last year or so? There have been some days in our life, hallelujah, ups and some downs in our life, but yet God has kept us. I know I'm right about this. I look at you now and I celebrate just to see your presence today. Amen. You could have been part of the club that should have, would have, and could have club. Amen. But we thank God for you. Go on, sit down if you can. Amen. Sit down if you can. Amen. I am thankful today. I'm so thankful today to be in the house today. Hallelujah. There are so many times and so many places where we have desired to be and were not able to be there. But yet to see you today, it does my heart good to see you. Now I see you with precautions because I know that we still have to be wise and not foolish with our faith. That we need to lean on the Lord and not get to the place where we become kind of, you know, lucid and laid back and stuff like that. We need to make sure that we still respect each other and respect the house of God and adhere to what has been stated today uh, as far as COVID is concerned. Know this, y'all, that no matter what normal, the normal way of doing things, don't expect that anymore. Just don't even expect it. Because normalcy will not happen. I, let me just say something to you. I don't even want it to be normal no more. No, because sometimes normal stuff ain't of God. And I think sometimes God allows calamities to happen in our lives so that we'll look to Him and not to ourselves. Stop trying to relive what's already gone. Brother Mitchell, I can't dump the basketball like I used to. It's already gone, so I can lay it up now. I can't do what I used to do, Brother John. I just can't do it. Amen. And so we need to hold on to the fact that change has occurred. And you can see by the different seating that we have in our sanctuary today, respect each other's distance. Amen. Amen. So we thank God for you all for doing that. I miss y'all so much. I do. I miss you so much. Uh, I was surprised to see as many people as I see in here now. Uh, I just miss you. Amen. I said I miss you so much. I love you. I love you and miss you so much. Amen. So we appreciate your presence today. Uh, so much has happened. Over the past year and a month, and uh, I can't tell, tell it all today, but if you just give me a few Sundays, I'll be able to get some of it out. Amen. Amen. Uh, I just appreciate you, and it's good to see you. Just love you so much. Love you so much. Now, you came, I'm sure, with... Uh, an eye to observe what was going on and to kind of see how church was going to be, you know. Well, church would be what you would have it to be. The worship that you bring to your God, to our God, is what you would have. I am not some uh, match light to get your spirit lit. You didn't have a year to light it. Amen. You ought to automatically be on fire. You, you really ought to be better to run to tell the truth about it. And, and, and because what God has done. And, and since we say we miss the physical gathering of such, 
It ought to show up in your actions sometime. Amen. 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 I I think about when I miss my wife. I, I don't I don't wait till she comes in the house to see him. Uh-uh, man. We meet at the driveway. Amen. I rush out there trying to act like I'm having her with luggage, but I be wanting to get her some sugar for us. I wish I had some evidence. There ought to be some excitement that you have. It's what I'm suggesting to you this morning. And uh, just good to see y'all. Uh, there have been some changes. Uh, we're going to continue to record. We're going to continue to do Facebook Live and YouTube and other sources of media. We're going to continue to do that because there are still some members who uh, deserve uh, uh, the worship service in their own settings. And so we want to respect that and we want to share that with them, Brother Monday. We want to make sure they get it. And so uh, we celebrate those of you who are watching via YouTube and those of you watching live Facebook. Welcome to the Mount Zion Baptist Church on Resurrection Day. We thank God that he has resurrected us to come and worship in this place one more time. Let me say this to each of you who are watching uh, live and those of you who are in the sanctuary. Our worship service and the order of worship is still being um, developed. We are fluid. And, and what we're doing, amen, we're fluid. And so we thank God for each of you. Please, in the name of Jesus, respect the social distance of each other again. Amen, amen. Unless you're with your family, you can sit close to your family, but don't sit close to nobody else's family. And listen, make sure you stay enough distance away from folk. Please, that'll make them uh, comfortable. Uh, please do that. Make sure you stay enough distance from folk. Love you in the name of the Lord. It's preaching time on Easter morning. Amen. So I'm going to preach this morning. And uh, I thank God for each of you. I want to read this morning one passage of scripture. Amen. The devil was really busy trying to keep me from getting this thing together. Thank you, son. Uh, I want to look at the book of Mark, and I want to look at chapter 15, and one verse, verse 37. It reads as such. Go on and get there. Mark 15 and 37. It reads like this. And Jesus cried with a loud voice and gave up the ghost. The New International Version reads like this. With a loud cry, Jesus breathed his last. I want to talk about this morning. Who killed Jesus? And uh, if you would be seated now, thank God, uh, say it in your own spirit, who killed Jesus? Because you got to ask that kind of question. Again, my brothers and sisters, I thank God that we are able to gather here today. Uh, it's just a blessing. It has been something that has uh, bothered me. I've been toiling over the past year and a month or so concerning us gathering. I just did not want to have it. The burden of somebody getting sick because there was a super spreading session in our sanctuary. But thank God you have, I can see you sitting distant from each other. I know that you went through tests when you walked in here. Uh, I know that some of us may have been a little bit inconvenienced. Uh, listen, I love you in the name of the Lord. I'd rather be inconvenienced than dead. And so let me go on be inconvenienced. And I hope that you have the right spirit concerning that. Amen. We are not going to put everybody at risk because of one person's inconvenience. We're just not going to do it. And I love you in the name of the Lord. And I'm sure Brother Word Law has shared some of those things with you all already. So thank God for you. Well, Mark is an interesting passage, my brothers and sisters. And again, I miss you over the past year. I, 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 I miss y'all so much. Don't make no sense. And, uh, I'm just thankful. But so much has happened over the past year. So much has happened. Uh, we've been uh, dealing with so much socially. There's been uh, 
some unprecedented interest in social justice as it relates to the people in our nation and in our city and our state today. Uh, and so there has been a great interest recently concerning the trial of uh, Chauvin, Officer Chauvin, in relationship to George Floyd and his, his killing. We, we, we seek justice and fairness when it comes to human beings today. Not, not injustice, there has been a history of injustice and, and you, can, you can pick any case you want. I mean, you, you can watch court TV, you can watch 2020, you can watch 60 Minutes, you can watch CNN. Clearly you'll see that real justice has been elusive when it comes to African American black color folk. And, 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 and scripture testifies concerning this type of injustice. Brother Egan, there was Naboth. Naboth had a wonderful vineyard, but Ahab, he turned around and, and, and stole it from him in an unjust way. Amen. And the Apotiphar's wife turns around and takes Joseph yeah. and, and says to, to, to everybody else that Joseph raped me. They have a mock jewelry. Joseph goes to trial and has to serve in jail. I'm going to ask him now. So all these things that have been occurring today in our life are not new. But nowhere is it seen so graphically than in the arrest and the trial and the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Nowhere, nowhere. You can, you can bring up any case you want from O.J. Simpson to 1995 to any case you have in Memphis just a few weeks ago. The fact of the matter is nowhere in Scripture or nowhere in life has one victim where injustice, injustice was so pushed upon him. I mean, here's a man that, that had uh, never sinned. He, he was innocent. He was the sinless son of God. And yet no one ever suffered more agony than Jesus Christ. Let me pause for a minute. This ain't even part of the sermon. But let me say to you, I came to talk about Jesus. I didn't come to give you something cute that you can go out and repeat. I didn't come with no catchy slogan, no funny phrase that you can talk about. I really like that. Uh, you need to hear about Jesus on Resurrection Day. He was cruelly executed. And, and the sad thing about Jesus' execution, he, he was executed by folk who openly shared the falsehood of their own statements. I mean, they admitted that they were lying, that they were wrong, and yet they still executed him, y'all. This was the greatest travesty of justice the world will ever see. You just gotta, can I, let me out a little bit, consider the facts. In 1 Peter 2 and 22, the text says, he committed no sin, nor was deceit found in his mouth. Jesus never committed sin, nor did he ever lie. Uh-uh, Jesus didn't. According to Hebrews 7 and 26, he was harmless, undefiled, and separate from sinners. That's just the fact of the matter. This was the worst. When, when Jesus was crucified, this was the worst miscarriage of justice ever in the world for all time. But there, but those are some, just a few of the facts. But the full story is even different. The crucifixion of Jesus Christ was also the greatest act of divine justice ever done. It was done in the full, uh, in full accord with the determined purpose and foreknowledge of God. See, Jesus died and we received salvation because of his sacrifice. Every true Christian celebrates that. 
Every true Christian knows that I was a sinner and Jesus died for my sins. See, if you ain't never made that kind of confession, I question your salvation. This, this was God's plan for us. His death, Jesus' death, was God's plan. Jesus Christ's death was the most important event that has ever happened in human history. I know President Obama being the first black president was a big event, but no, no, no. It ain't bigger than the event of Jesus Christ dying on Calvary's cross. I know your child and your grandbaby being born was something big that you gave a party and had sock cops for them as you lived your life, but the truth of the matter is that has never been an event as big as the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, the question that I ask you this morning, who killed? Who, who killed Jesus? True for the who did? It? Immediately in your mind, you immediately blame the Jews. You blame the Jews. Maybe it was the Jews. Maybe they had a religious purpose of doing so. Isaiah 49 and 7 suggests that they despised and they hated Jesus. Isaiah 53 and 3 says that he was despised and rejected of men. Even the high priest of that day who had just got the job, Caiaphas, who had been appointed, Caiaphas turns around and he leads a mock jury of folk. Listen, he had a, he had a trial at night. A religious folk had gotten together. This Sanhedrin had gotten together to crucify Jesus. I mean, the, the, those Jews, Caiaphas and the rest of the crew must have been politically motivated because he was such an opportunist that he would jump on anything to make him look good in front of the Roman government. This was the kind of guy who always wanted to shine. It didn't matter if nobody else was shining with him or not. Matter of fact, he didn't want nobody else to shine. He wanted to look like the HNIC at all times and he wanted to just make himself something great. And so he pulls together the Sanhedrin Council. Certainly they were culpable. They were the kind of people who were uh, uh, responsible for Jesus' death. Yes, they were. I mean, these, these Jews were the same ones who were hollering Hosanna last week, but this week they hollered crucify. It's amazing that people, how people can turn in your life. Let me stay there just for a minute. Some folk can celebrate you right now, but then tolerate you later on. I wish I had some heaven in now. Amen. And so they turn around and celebrated Jesus. Amen. One week ago, but now they tolerate it. Now they're saying crucify him even now. Maybe they had some religious purpose. And I think the religious purpose for the Jew in that day is that we want everything to stay the same. We don't want things to change. And this here Jesus is trying to change that. So maybe the Jew had something to do with it. Maybe it did. Maybe the Jew had something to do with killing Jesus. But not only that, maybe the Gentiles. Maybe the Gentiles had something to do with it. For the Romans were Gentiles. And you and I, we are Gentiles. You see, the Romans uh, had, if you will, a retaliatory reason. See, whereas the Jews had a religious reason, they had more of a retaliation type reason. See, you do know that it was the Romans who sentenced Jesus to death. It wasn't the Jew. You do know it was Pontius Pilate, a Gentile Roman governor who sentenced him to death. They, 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 these Romans, they were experts when it comes to killing folk. They knew how to hang somebody on the cross. They were like the Jim Crow folk of the past. They knew how to hang a Negro from a tree. I wish I had some help in here now. They perfected the crucifixion. The Roman folk knew how to do it. If you study the history, amen, and look at Josephus' writing of how the Romans scared everybody, they once hung 600 folk along the way into, uh, into Jerusalem, into the Roman Empire. 600 folk were hanging on crosses. They want y'all to know, mess up if you want to. 
we gonna straighten you up. They had a retaliatory viewpoint. They they would retaliate in a minute. They wanted things to say the, the same way too. And according to John 19 and 34, it was a Roman soldier who even pitched Jesus in the side. So maybe these Roman Gentiles had a whole lot to do with it. I mean, you got Rome. You got Herod, you got the Gentiles, you got Caiaphas from a religious standpoint, and you got the rest of the Sanhedrin Council, and you got the other religious folks, the scribes, the Pharisees, the Sadducees. You have all these kinds of folk who have gotten together to kill Jesus. And so, and it's interesting to know that these folk had never gotten together before. Never. They have never gotten together for one single purpose ever in the history of humanity. But now they got together to kill Jesus. And the truth of the matter is, they still not together today. There was only one instance in the history of the world where these facets got together and it was to kill Jesus. So we do know now that the Jew and the Gentile had something to do with killing Jesus. But as I scratch the scripture even more, it seems to me that even God had something to do with the death of Jesus. God himself had something. Isaiah 53 and 10 says that it pleased the Lord to bruise him. Wow. It, it, it moves further that he has put him to grief for he was an offering for sin. God himself wanted to do something about us in here and us in our sin. God himself. God knew that all of us in here who are so happy to come back into the sanctuary that all of us have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Can I pause that just for a moment? <laughs> because many of us really learned how to see it now over the last year because since you went in the building, you was in, you know, whatever else you were doing. <laughs> Y'all ain't got to say amen, amen. Amen, amen, amen. amen. And, so, and, so, and so, but all of us have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So God so loved us that he sent his son to save us. Y'all should have a holler, amen. <laughs> amen, amen. That, that, that's the truth of the matter. It's interesting. Let me just say this too about Easter. Easter's are interesting because look, Easter, so often people come to see a show. And, and then when the show is no longer there, they'll, they'll sit on you, Brother Shirley. They'll sit on you. But, 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 but the truth of the matter is the celebratory part of Easter is that the God sent his son to die for us. It yet pleased God to bruise Jesus. You gotta ask the question, how in the world was God himself pleased to bruise Jesus? He was pleased by the redemption that it accomplished. Whereas the Jews had a religious purpose and the Gentiles had a retaliatory purpose, God had in mind redemption. Mm. God, it pleased God that redemption was a not redemption of Jesus, but redemption of you and I who are here. Redemption of all of us who have sinned. Redemption of all of us who couldn't save ourselves. Redemption. Jesus Christ becomes that redemption for us. He was pleased, God was, with the sacrifice of Jesus for you and for me, for our benefit. That's why Jesus died, for our benefit. You see, if somebody asks you this day, why should God let you into heaven? You, you, you might, you know, some of us may turn around, well, I was at church on Easter 2021. Some of us might turn around and say, well, I've been a tither. In all, I've been to Sunday school. Well, my mama and dad have built that church. You know, all that kind of stuff. That don't have nothing to do with your redemption. That has nothing to do with your salvation. Amen. It has it all. But the only reason why God should let you into heaven 
is because you have accepted Jesus Christ in lieu of your sin and that he is your Lord and your Savior. I ain't stuck y'all in here. That's preaching even if you don't recognize it or not. Because had it not been for Jesus, all of us would be on the highway to hell. Maybe, maybe God had something to do with the killing. I know that sounds controversial for many, but the truth of the matter is, God sent his son that he might die on the cross called Calvary. That we might be able to live forever with him. And I'm glad to see the morning that God did it that way. He, he did it all for us. And I conclude by saying in this sermon that God in Christ uh, used the Gentiles, used the Jews, and himself he decided to use himself so that he could bring us unto himself. He did it all for us. All and every one of us. Because we were the Gentiles. And if you were the Gentiles, you were the Jews. If you were the Jews, you were the lie. So you had to be one or the other. But thank God for the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Thank God. Yes, the greatest event of history was certainly he died. But secondary, I think, and even right connected with it on a basis of an equal level was that he got up on Easter morning one day. That third day, he was resurrected. And because of that, we have the hope of being resurrected with him on that great day. I'm looking forward to it. That morning, when my eyes closed for the last time, and my soul opened up, and I celebrate with the Christ on the other side. I look forward to that. Y'all. I look forward to that. That, that how, how Jesus made a way for us when he decided to get up out of that dusty grave and say, I got my sign on my mind. Got all power. Power, power to change lives. Power uh, to help you. Power to fix you. Power to heal you. Jesus Christ. The resurrected one, the propitiation of our faith, dies and is resurrected and is coming back again for you and I. That's what Easter really is all about. It ain't about no eggs. It ain't about no little speech that children do. It ain't about you getting your hair fixed and getting a new dress. It ain't about that. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Easter is about a resurrected Savior that saved sinners like you and me. And I'm so glad this morning that I had something to do with it. Yeah, but the songwriter says, were you there when they crucified my Lord? I'll echo in the background, yes, Lord, I was there. I may not have been there in the physical, but my thought processes, my sin was there. He nailed them to a cross, and I'm thankful this morning for salvation through Jesus Christ. Is there anybody in here this morning that's thankful for salvation? Had it not been, can I say that one more time? I feel like saying it like the old country. Is there anybody in here who is thankful for salvation in Jesus Christ? Don't you know you ain't doing this thing on your own? He was there all the time. Trust him. Trust him and know that in Christ, the solid rock, we have salvation through him and only through him. It comes not by any other. Don't be misled by the smooth, softer voices of others. It is only through Jesus. And that's why Easter is so important. You want to know who killed him? All of us had something to do with it. Everybody did, because our seat was the spit that stuck him. Our actions was the crown of thorn that was placed on his head. Our actions was the robe that was placed around him that was bloody. But yet, God loved us so much. In spite of our sin, 
spite of our wrong, spite of our blind spirit and uh, hormoning attitudes, God yet loved us through it all. So I thank God for Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Resurrecting. I'm glad today that we're going to do the Lord's Supper too. I'm glad that. I'm glad. Because I know what the supper means. I know the supper means that he bled and died for me. But yet he invites me to the table to come and participate in his love. That he yet prepares for us his body and his blood ultimate sacrifice. I'm glad we're doing communion this morning. I'm glad not just because it's the first Sunday, but because it's Easter morning. And so I thank God for each of you. Let me extend an invitation to those who may be watching, those who may be sitting in the church today. There might be somebody today who, through hearing the word of God, has decided to make Jesus Christ their choice. We encourage you to come. The doors of God's house is open. There might be somebody here. Amen. Amen. The doors of God's house is come. Come all the way down, Brother Jackson. Y'all come all the way down. Amen. The doors of God's house is open. You may come by letter. Keep social distance, please. You may come by letter. You may come by Christian experience. You may come as a candidate for baptism. We encourage you to come. You who are watching it via YouTube live, we encourage you to contact the church. This area code 901. 942-0879. Share with us your victory story that we might celebrate with you that we become brothers and sisters in Christ. That we have accepted the ultimate sacrifice of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. The doors of God's house is open. Is there one? You may be watching. Don't you dare think that you can't join. You can even right now. Hallelujah. Call the church. Someone will answer you. Share your story with them. Hallelujah. He is Lord. He is Lord. Yes, He is Lord. He is risen.
uh, orders of God, if you will, the oracles of God is a better way of saying that. Hallelujah. And I want to do justice to this. First uh, Corinthians chapter 11. Listen for the word of God. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you. And that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner, also he took the cup, and when he had some saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and to drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. Let's pray. Father, even now we come remembering, oh God, what you have done for us. We thank you for dying on the cross. Oh God, God was here. We thank you for your blood that was shed. We thank you for the suffering that you went through. But oh God, we celebrate the fact that you were resurrected on that third day. And that you're coming back for your own. And thus, Lord, we pause to remember all that you have done. For thou art God. Hallelujah. The scripture says that he took bread. Go on and open it and take the bread. He break it and told them to eat. Let us eat. Likewise, he took the cup. Thank God for it. Told them to drink. Let us drink. They saw the song of fellowship. We'll do the same. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord.
the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, the sacrificial offering of Jesus the Christ be with you all, now and forever. We enjoy with me by saying amen. amen. God bless you. Love you. See you next Sunday. God bless you. God keep you. Amen.